Hello, and welcome to the eTech Podcast with me, your host, Ryan Morn. I have been involved in the development of electrified vehicles and machines since 2005 as an engineer and a business leader. This podcast is the product of my passion for electric and autonomous vehicle technology. I'm here to share knowledge from some of the world's leading experts, as well as my own insights. Join me as we accelerate the transition to cleaner, safer and smarter vehicles and grow the industry around the world. Today's podcast is going to be about um, fuel cell electric vehicles. Um, so this has come up a few times recently and it came up yesterday and I thought, you know what, this would be a great topic to talk about in some more detail. So what I'm talking about here is um, the battle that people like to set between fuel cells and electric vehicles, okay? And this drives me nuts, okay, to be honest. Um, it's one of my pet hates. So uh, you see it in the press, you see people talking about it on social media, what's going to win, is it the VHS versus Betamax moment, fuel cells versus electric vehicles, okay? They're all completely wrong. <laughs> and uh, that's a bit of a sweeping statement and, and a little bit tongue-in-cheek. Um, but what I mean is... Um, a fuel cell vehicle is an electric vehicle, okay? So we've got um, battery electric vehicles where you've got traction motor, electronics, and a battery pack storing the energy. So that's a kind of conventional electric vehicle. And then you've got a fuel cell electric vehicle. So in a fuel cell electric vehicle, you've still got an electric motor driving the wheels, still got electronics controlling that. You've even still got a battery pack but then you've also got a fuel cell sitting over the top of that. Um, so really the key difference is that in the fuel cell um, vehicle, you use the fuel cell to convert hydrogen gas, which is stored under pressure, into electricity. And the reason why you'd want to do that is because you get much uh, better energy storage density with a fuel cell system than you do with a plain old battery. So the, the difference is about 5 to 1. So you can store approximately 5 times as much energy with a fuel cell system as you can with a regular battery system. So, you know, in, in an application where you need a lot of energy, um, you want to drive a long distance, you want to use the vehicle intensively, then a fuel cell could come into play if you can't do what you need to do with the, with the battery. But uh, fundamentally, a fuel cell... Uh, vehicle is more complicated than just a conventional battery electric vehicle. So in a fuel cell EV, you've got the same electrical powertrain, you've still got a battery, and you've also got a fuel cell and all the balance of plant and the hydrogen storage tanks. And then to be honest, that adds cost, it adds complexity, adds packaging challenges. Um, so that makes making the vehicle more difficult. But then from a pure energy point of view, you're using hydrogen, which typically you've generated the hydrogen gas using electricity. Um, you store it under pressure, and then you're converting it back into electricity in the fuel cell. So you've got a conversion efficiency loss there as well with a fuel cell compared, compared to a conventional electric vehicle, unless you can find a way of generating hydrogen that doesn't use uh, energy. So that could be renewable hydrogen or it could be um, hydrogen gas that's generated during periods of excess uh, wind power generation, or it could be waste gas from in industrial process. Um, there are ways. Um, they're not the way that hydrogen is typically generated today, um, but there are ways. So, so fundamentally, a fuel cell uh, system, it does have a role to play, but you've got, uh, you've got a few downsides. You've got the extra packaging complexity. You've got the extra equipment um, and you've got the energy conversion loss of going from electricity to hydrogen gas and under pressure to store it back to electricity to drive the vehicle. Um, so you've got to be prepared to pay for that extra energy storage. So what's happened now with battery technology in electric vehicles is batteries have improved to the extent where actually it's perfectly possible to package 40 to 60 kilowatt hours of battery um, in a way that it's, it, it's not excessively heavy, it's not excessively expensive. It fits in the vehicle drive by. So if you look at new vehicles coming out into the market, so the new Nissan Leaf, for example, is a 40 kilowatt hour battery. You've got one of my uh, current favorites, the Hyundai Kona, 
which is coming out, which has a 65 kilowatt hour battery, the Jaguar I-Pace, amazing car, 75 kilowatt hour battery. So basically for, for day-to-day -day driving, um, you're not even going to have to recharge it every day. You might recharge once a week if you've got a sort of typical commute, you know, average average commute. You're only going to be in recharging that intensively if you want to use it for very long journeys. So you're going to travel two or 300 miles and you have to stop to, to recharge. So in that scenario, you would have some advantages with a fuel cell in that you can uh, refill it with gas very quickly. So you don't have to be waiting and and you can go further because you've got more storage capacity on board. So really, uh, for most most vehicles, though, that you know, the, the frequency at which we're going to want to do those long journeys or go beyond the capacity of the battery pack is going to be so rare that it's just not worth the extra cost of putting the fuel cell um, into the into the vehicle. But for uh, applications like ships and aeroplanes. Um, Taxis, warehouse equipment, so where forklift trucks working in a warehouse where you want them to work like 20 hours a day and actually the charging downtime is, is lost, then fuel cells have, have got a role to play in that application. So I am a I'm big fan of fuel cells. I think they're fantastic. I remember at Avid, we built a fuel cell powered bus a number of years ago and it, you know, it amazed me how, how a fuel cell worked, that process of converting hydrogen gas into electricity and water. And yes, I did. I drank the water that came out of the tailpipe. Um, so really, uh, you know, brilliant process. But I also big fan of battery electric and the, the benefits that a battery electric can bring to you. Um, you know, the simplicity of a battery electric is pretty hard to beat. The, the um, I think the main challenge looking forwards for fuel cell systems will be battery energy density continues to rise. Um, so we'll get to a point where actually battery uh, energy density is comparable to what you can do with a fuel cell system. And you will you know, not have the conversion losses of going from electricity to hydrogen back to electricity, um, and you won't have the complexity in the balance of plant. So really, if you're watching fuel cells, you want to watch that, uh, that battery energy density curve very closely to work out when it's going to intersect um, the fuel, fuel cell energy storage capacity. And, you know, that's, that is not going to happen in the next two years, in the next five years, not even in the next 10 years, I don't think. Um, but it, it is likely that it will happen, and certain things that are going on with batteries at the moment look very promising. Uh, so in particular, solid-state batteries um, are very, very promising in terms of increasing energy density. Um, so, so that's it, really. That's all I wanted to talk about today was... The, the battle that people like to wage between a fuel cell and an electric vehicle, okay, it's, it's nonsense, doesn't exist. A uh, fuel cell vehicle is an electric vehicle, um, electric vehicle, battery electric vehicle. So the battle could be against battery electric versus fuel cells, but um, even that, it's not really a battle. They're two different technologies, you would use them in two different ways. So if you, um, battery electric is great, it's simple. Uh, the costs have massively come down. The performance has, has got an awful lot better. And we're seeing a lot of battery electric vehicles come on the market. Um, there's issues, without a doubt. So challenges to overcome with recharging infrastructure, uh, with consumer acceptance, you know, people's behavior. If you're used to being able to travel 400 miles on a tank of fuel, you know, getting used to the fact that you can't do that anymore, um, you know, and understanding why it's important or not important to you. There's, there's definitely some challenges there. Um, fuel cells uh, adds a level of complexity, but it's worth it if you if you need that extra energy uh, density in the in the application. So for trucks, uh, you know you can do a lot with a fuel cell in a truck. Adds add some cost in shipping fuel cells. Very good solution in shipping. Uh, lots of money been poured into that. Rolls Royce, Hyundai, um, working on that. Uh, lots lots of other players in that space as well in the shipping space. And in, in aerospace, in aircraft, uh, very good solution for aircraft for generating electricity to, to run electric propulsion systems in the aircraft, which is a lot of work going on around that. So I'm not saying that there's no place for fuel cells. There definitely is a place for fuel cells. I love them. Um, I love battery electric. What I'm saying is it's not a fight. It's not a VHS beta max competition, uh, one versus the other. The two different technologies, you use them in different ways, you use them in different places. Batteries are some way off being able to do the energy storage capacity. 
that you can do with a fuel cell system. Um, but if you can, if you need, if you need that energy storage, fuel cells worth considering. If you don't, it's not, because it's just adding cost complexity and adding a taking efficiency out of the system by having the gas conversion. Um, so that's it. That's it for today. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you've got any questions, make sure you ask them uh, to us below. There's ways to get in touch with us. Put it in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We're going to have more podcasts uh, coming. We're going to talk about all sorts of different aspects of electric vehicle technology. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like it, give us a rating, put some comments below, and uh, look forward to speaking to you again soon.